Chronicles chapter 26 remain standing as we read God's word. Second Chronicles chapter 26. I'll just read some selected verses. Second Chronicles 26 verse 3 to 7 and then verse 15 because of our time we won't be able to read everything. All right, Second Chronicles chapter 26 verse 3. Uzziah was 16 years and why for he was what marvelously helped until he became what i will be speaking very briefly on what i tell you you will be marvelously helped somebody declares here i will be marvelously helped you don't have an idea what a help person look like if you know what it means for god to help a man you will say it louder say i will be marvelously helped Father, we pray for the blessing on your word today. Minister to a man, a woman, a boy, a girl who is in need of your word. And I pray that this will be a turning point in someone's life tonight. In Jesus the Christ, mighty name we pray. And amen. God bless you. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I have about 50 minutes and I would see how I can quickly walk around that so that we can wrap up everything uh, by the grace of God. The first thing I want to say to you here is that there is, there is no comparison on earth. There is nothing you can compare with the help of God. There is nothing you can compare with the help of God. There is a difference between a man that helps himself with a man that men help and trust me there is also a difference between a man that help himself a man that men help and a man that the devil help <laughs> now listen i know you are in church so you may not know that you may not know but i need to tell you that there are four kinds of help. There is self-help. There is man's help. There is Satan's help. And there is God's help. All of these dimensions of helps have their capacities. Varying capacities. Don't let anybody fool you. Satan helps men. <laughs> Satan helps men. That's why many are joining the court. So in case you are not know you, you don't know because you've been in church for too long. I want to let you know that men find help from Satan. But let's talk about the different categories of help. Number one is self-help. There are certain things that God expects you to do by yourself for yourself. Failure to do so will not attract the help of God. God expects you to pay your rent. He won't pay it for you. God has never gone to a landlord and say, hey landlord, I came to pay rent on behalf of my son. He will be an irresponsible God to be paying rent on your behalf. You must help yourself. Planning your children's school fees is your responsibility. You need to do that. In fact, doing that shows God that you are a highly responsible person who deserves his help. So there is something called self-help. That you wake up in the morning and you brush your teeth. God won't do it for you. They don't make toothpaste in heaven. It is illegal for angels to bring you toothbrush. Self-help. Going to work. They won't, angels won't come to your house and carry you to work. You need to help yourself out of bed at the right time and go to work. It is called self-help. Why am I starting at this point? 
the Pentecostal church has so focused on God's help that we have forgotten self-help. So today we see a lot of young men who will sit down and all they do, shakamana de, shike de. Now, I, I, I'm a man of prayer. I believe in prayer. Amen. But, but I tell all those who care to know, apart from the fact that you see me pray in the morning, you have no idea my work ethics. You, you, don't, you don't have an idea. I wish my wife is here. I finish our morning prayer, 7 in the morning, 7.30. I attend to people until 9 o'clock. From 9 o'clock, I sit down. And I begin to walk administrative works i begin to write books i begin to study until 10 in the night outside of church i consult for nations i speak to government i speak to people in government some of your governors i talk to them on governance of their nation of their states I leave the country on a Sunday night and I enter the U.S., do some things for the U.S. government and I rush back home. Straight from the airport, I come straight to the church. Sometimes within five hours of flying from London to Nigeria, you finish one book. And you make a manual out of the book. God will not read for me. Somebody say self-help. I, 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 I know I came to the right place. This is Calamos. I am not afraid to talk to you at the level at which I'm talking to you today. Because I know that I came home. I came home. This is home. And I want to start seeing spiritually intelligent people i want this church to be a church that people will look at and say they are physically balanced emotionally balanced psychologically balanced spiritually balanced financially balanced somebody shall call them us that's who you are so the first level of help is self-help that as you earn your salary, you know the difference between the fruit part of the salary and the seed part. That farmers don't eat the seed, they keep it for planting. The fruit is your own, eat it. But the seed must be kept for planting. Otherwise in the next cycle of harvest, you will be in lack. So self-help includes financial planning, career planning. How long do I want to work where I'm working? And in five, ten years time, where do I go to? Am I going to work here until my life is wasted? Self-help. That you plan your old age. That whilst you are young, you are saving money. And you are saying, look, my money that comes in, 10% God's part, my savings part, my retirement part, you, no matter how small, you start, it's called self-help. That you watch what you eat. That it is available doesn't mean it should be eatable. It's called self-help. I knew that in my bloodline, I knew that the men normally grow very fat. I knew. I see my, I see my uncles. You will need to carry them to carry the leg. You will need people to carry their legs. I say I don't want to end up like this. So I made a decision very early in my life. I said, until I am 50, I said, I will never have pot belly. So I was so meticulous about my diet. Seven o'clock, 
you can't, if you like, cook anything. My wife knows it's frustration. You're wasting your time. Seven, there are things I don't take. Morning, there are things I take. It is called what, sir? Self-help. That I watch what I eat. Because I know that I have a long journey. Can you help me up, please, sound guy? You don't need to put the high, just put the low. I knew that my journey was going to be a long one. Self-help requires that you sit down and you say to yourself, you're taking too low. That's too low. I don't, just keep it. That's strong. Just keep it there. Self-help requires that I am able to sit down and say, where do I want my children to go and school? And if I know that my children are going to school abroad, sir, with the dollar rate, God will not, God will not be keep taking money and be changing them to dollars and be keeping them. It means I need to start early. So when my son looked at me at GSS3, he was in GSS3, and we were on holiday in Florida, and he said, Daddy, I, I love Disney. I want to do um, I want to do animation. I said, God, why did I bring this boy here? He said, Daddy, this is where I want to come. I want to walk here. And then we entered one of the universities in Florida. And we went to the animation department. We said, do you like this? He said, yes. I said, if you go back home and, and read very well. And you pass, then you will come here. And then we saw the way my boy was work, working very hard. Self-help. When we saw the way he was working, I called the mother and said, oh yeah, we too. Because if this boy truly gets admission and <laughs> we don't get money to give him, do, uh, what do we say? And then we quickly called a Christian brother in Florida. We said, how much is, how much is the school fees per annum? And they said to us, it's for about 14000 or 16000 So I told my wife, I said, before this boy finish GSS3, let's work hard. Let us save money for four years. We went on the double. And when God saw how we were stretching, he met us. So that we had the money for four years plus. The only challenge was that when my son was going to get admission, my wife called me and she said, sorry, sweetheart, your son has a different admission. I said, I don't understand. I was not in the country. My wife said, your son has a different admission. I said, what do you mean by different admission? We have agreed on the school he's going to in GSS3. She said, he has gone for another school. I said, what school? By the time she was going to mention the school, I said, I've never had that name before. When we were going to look at it, it turned out to be the number one animation school in the world. My wife was excited when she saw the admission. But I'm not the type that gets easily excited. So I say, because it, it came with papers. So the on top was the admission. I said, all these other papers on that, what are they for? <laughs> so I, I kept the admission. I said, let me read the other papers. And I saw tuition. And guess what? The tuition for one year is the tuition for four years. In public school because this is the number one admission school. So as soon as my wife was rolling on the ground worshipping God for the admission. So I said, sweetheart, she said yes. She was still on the floor. She said yes. I said the admission, the tuition, when I mentioned the amount. I said four years is not even equal. We need to add money for one year. My wife didn't know when she stood up from worshipping God. I use it to tease every time. I said, you were worshipping God. When you had money, you jump up. <laughs> and as soon as she sat down, she didn't know where the inspiration came from. She said, David, you are not going to that school. She said, let's look for another school. I said, baby, why? She said, is he going to kill you? How are, you go are you going to kill yourself to get... I said, no, baby. We can't tell him not to go to a school of his church. Couple the fact that he's going to be the one out of two Nigerians... Who got admission to that school? I said, he must go. She said, but where will you get the money? I said, I don't know, but he must go. I said, you and I will double up our work rate. 
in about, uh, by next year, April, he's going to be done with school. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, it is, you need to make sure there's good self-help. When God sees, that's why sometimes when they say, heaven help those who help themselves, there is a sense in it. You cannot sleep as a blunder and expect to wake up as a wonder. You cannot have a blunderous youthful life and expect to have a wondrous adult years. So it's time for you to take control of what you must take control of. You cannot ignore your wife and expect to have a happy home. Self-help requires that you learn to celebrate her birthday. Appreciate her. Thank her. Honor your wife. Speak to her. Don't ignore her. It's called self-help. God will not love your wife on your behalf. Jesus will not because Jesus has his own wife. And he's not a polygamist. Husbands, love your own wife as Christ. So what he said is that study how Jesus loved his wife so you can know how to love your own wife. Who is his wife? So the church is not your own wife, brother. So I have learned to tell myself as a pastor of the church, the church is not my wife. It's my boss's wife. And there's nothing wrong to serve your boss's wife. <laughs> On the behalf of your boss, you take, Madam, what do you need? You need shoe, you need, Madam, or make I give you. Is that okay? And once you're done, Madam, I don't finish work today. Anything you want make I do again? I they go see my own. <laughs> self-help. Number two, because of time. So, so let me say on self-help a bit. Those of us who are young people, you need to have 10, 10 year plans. In the next 10 years, where are you going to? At, the, at 20, a Jewish young man is supposed to bat misfa. I mean at 12. And at 20, you are apprentice. At 30, you step out on the platform of destiny. That's why at 30, Joseph began to reign as king. At 30, David began to reign. At 30, Jesus manifested. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. It is dangerous to be doing at 30 what you should have done at 20. It is called the complication of life. When what should have been done at 30, you are seeking to do at 40. And then you carry over 30, 40 to 50. At 40, you become a gift to a nation. At 50, you become an institution. You begin to mentor another generation in the area of your expertise. Meaning between 30 and 50, the world should know you for something. Zero to 50 are the years to be going, going, going. From 50 above, where you have gone to, the world should come to you. The Holy Ghost will not plan your life for you. He can share the plan of God with you, but he will not plan your life for you. Number two, there is what we call, what kind of help again? Man's help. Day by day, men kept coming to help David. Day by day, Men kept coming to help David. Let me say this. And everybody needs to listen carefully to me. There is how far you can take yourself to. You can start small things by yourself. But you cannot do big things by yourself. You need men. Ah, you need men. Those who value men rise higher than those who value self. Self-help can never be equal to men's help. Because the best of self-help cannot be equal to men's help. When people come together 
to utilize their talents, their skills, and their ability to help you, it will be far superior to what you can do by yourself for yourself. Look at the excellent atmosphere we have here. I, I am very doubtful if pastor was the one that arranged the chair, put on the camera, played the drum, and as he was playing drums, he was also playing keyboard. The beauty of what you enjoy here is as a result of men's participation. You have gone as far as men, men's help has allowed you. Meaning, your life can be better if you value human beings. If you will begin to value human beings, your life will take on a new dimension. And it is important to realize that some of the people that God will send to help you, they are not people you like. They are people you need. The ability to discern that difference is what establishes your speed on earth. Can I say it again? Most of the people that God will send to humor, they are not going to be people you like, but they are people you what? You need. And there's a difference between those I like and those I need. Those you like, they give you comfort. Those you need, they give you progress. And the, the problem with men's help is that when God sends men to you, you always hear things like, Pastor, you know me, I don't... Pastor, you know me, eh? She, you know, Pastor, you know, you know say, Pastor, you know I'm a quiet person now. She, she know me now. I'm a very quiet person. Pastor, this girl, she talks too much. Ha! Pastor, me, I don't like that kind of person. I beg. <laughs> all things bright and beautiful. All creatures. All things. The Lord. The day you celebrate variety, your life will become colorful. The moment you begin to celebrate variety, your life will begin to become colorful. The moment you begin to celebrate difference, your speed will begin to show on earth. Difference. Similarity makes for comfort. It is difference that guarantees success. That is why the best marriages are between two opposites. It is the management of opposite that guarantees success. The reason why marriages fail is when opposites are in a marriage and one person wants the opposite to be like me. So my wife, my wife is an alpha, she's an alpha female. Alpha woman, you know alpha woman. So she's a choleric. My wife is the doing, do, no nonsense, doing type. Let's do it. <laughs> my wife doesn't have, um, she doesn't have doubt in her vocabulary. If I say, baby, I'm thinking of um, this house, I'm just thinking that maybe one day we'll buy it. She said, hey, so what's happening? Maybe we'll buy them now. I said, no, I said, I'm thinking that one. Then she asked me a question like, where's your faith? I said, no, no, it's not that I'm doubting. I'm, for now, I'm just... I didn't know what I got into until the first three months into our marriage. So I'll just call my wife and say, sweetheart, come. Because I'm a, I like to express, I'm a thinker, so I like to share my thoughts. So I call my wife and say, baby, I beg, I want to tell you something. She was like, what is it? I said, there's this dream I'm having, something we're going to be doing in our church in the future and all of that. So my, in the morning, my wife woke up and said, hey, that thing we talked about yesterday, can we start now? I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, we're not starting. I said, I was just telling you, I was just thinking in my mind. She said, hey, we can start it now. Now, see, I don't think throughout the night, I was thinking how we can do it. I said, hey, hmm. Eighty-five <laughs> percent of my achievements today have been as a result of my wife. Eighty-five percent. Otherwise, the paralysis of analysis that is typical of phlegmatics like us, where you will sit down, they say, see opportunity, and wait. 
Um, are you sure this light is, what color is it first? Sorry, is the tripod standing very well? I need to be very sure. Is it symmetrical? By the time you are sure, the opportunity is gone. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about here? Man's help. There are five kinds of people God will be sending into your life from today. Number one, introducers. I will pray for you very shortly. What do I call them? Calamos. Man of God, woman of God. I am telling you what the Lord is saying to me concerning this house. We are going to start seeing introducers come. People that will carry the fragrance of this house and will give you a call and say, Pastor, I just took the church to so so and so city. Pastor, people there want us to come and start church. Not at your expense. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. People that will mention your name in strange places. They are called introducers. These are people that will say to the king, I know a young man. His name is Joseph. He is gifted. He has done his job, self-help. He has polished his gift. He is not waiting for God to polish his gift. He knows how to present his gift. He is a king material, but has no king introducer. I want to pray for a gifted person here. But uh, you, you, you are so gifted, you are so knowledgeable in your field, but you've not gotten the kind of introduction that brings you to the place where your gift will be celebrated. From today, the Lord raise your introducers. I'm not getting your amen. The Lord raise your introducers. Somebody will mention your name where your life will change. Can I have the keyboardist, please? Please sit down. It is dangerous to do life without introducers. Sir, I want you to think about this. If not for that man who mentioned David to the king, David will be playing instruments at the highest level of skillfulness to animals that can't say thank you. Do you know what it means to have sharpened your gift? To have, to have honed your skills? Only to find yourself using your gift for people who don't know the value of it. It is the greatest frustration on earth. I want you to imagine, sir, that that man, the butler, didn't go to the king to mention Joseph to the king. He will rot away in the prison. Gifted to interpret dreams, but rotting away inside the prison. I came to announce to someone here, God is picking you out of your hiding place. Yeah. There are people on the plate. Just put it on pad. There are people on that, the sound of my voice. Your voice should be heard across the nations. But the devil has confined you to a little corner where your voice is not celebrated. After today, by this same time next year, during this same conference, you will be testifying that my introducer showed up. Somebody needs to mention your name. You have the gift, but you don't have platforms. I can preach, but I don't own this platform. If not for your pastor who introduced me to you today, there is no way you'll be hearing my voice. Am I talking to somebody here? In the same vein, your giftedness does not matter if you don't have an introducer. The greatest frustration in the life of any man is to be so gifted and you don't have an introducer. The Lord sent me to announce to you, I don't know who you are over there, the Lord sent me to announce to you that in this season I'm raising one who will mention your name where it matters. 
I was minding my business in Abuja. I was minding my business. As I was minding my own business, 2010. I'm sure something is, they'll just switch up, find something that is burning. Let the electrical guy sort that out. I was minding my own business in Abuja. I didn't know 2008, 2009, that the president of the United States had given an instruction that they needed one person from Nigeria who is proficient in the area of leadership. And this was to be carried out by a 10-man nomination committee. Five in the West to do shortlisting from the West and five in the North to shortlist. Then the 10 of them will meet and come out with one name and the rule is that it must be unanimously agreed upon by the 10-man nomination committee. Just keep it down a bit. Now here is the game. I did not know about it. Hello sir, even if I had known that there was something like that going on, I would not have applied. You know why? I didn't see myself to be qualified. Abba, where people like my God, Reverend Sam Adeyemi was present, how can I? I didn't, I mean, if I know Reverend Sam was going to apply, I would just back out. I was just in my own house, in my office, in the church, when I got a phone call. Hello, are you Sam Oye? I said, yes. He said, I'm the public diplomacy officer for the U.S. Embassy. He said, on the orders of the President of the United States, he said, I have been asked to ask you to consider sending us your passport that on the orders of the U.S. Department of State, we are offering you a special visa based on the integrity of the United States government. I said, what is this all about? They said the nomination was done and that you came overall best. I said, sorry, maybe you want to say Sam Adeyemi, not me. And he said, sir, can you please bring your passport? I said, why not? He said, no, sir, we know you're a very busy man. I said, me busy. Pastor, which kind busy are they busy? U.S. Embassy. You busy. He said, he said, he said, sir. He said, I know you are very busy. I said, sir, no, no, no. He said, sir, please, we, because we respect your time, can you send any of your staff? God so can one of our deacons was in my front. The phone was on speaker. I, I said, okay, so he said that he sent me. I said, yes, one of my staff will be bringing it. Mommy, that's how they took my stuff. And the next thing, found myself in the U.S. As I was arriving, three U.S. Department agent veterans arrived and said, you are Sam. They carried my placard. You are Sam. I said, yes. They said, sir, we are assigned to be with you for the whole of your stay in the United States. Anything you need, we are here to attend to you. I, I said, calm down. <laughs> Here we are, they took me to the hotel. We're just walking distance from the White House. So I was from my hotel looking at the White House. Trekked to the White House. We were having a meeting the next day. And from the village, they followed me to the United States. <laughs> Pastor, this low life is not a small thing, no. I was in a meeting with U.S. agents who were giving me briefs of what my movement was going to be. And inside me, I was looking at them like this. I have left. You will not like what I'm about to tell you. As I was looking at them, I left. I found myself back in Nigeria. And I heard myself telling myself, it was not you they are looking for. That somebody is about to walk into the meeting now to say, sorry sir, we made a mistake. That we have realized it was so so and so person we wanted to invite, not you. Then I heard myself telling myself in Nigeria that at least, any, anyhow, I don't enter America for one day. <laughs> when the Lord turns again, can, can I prophesy to somebody here? It will do you like a dream. I said it will do you like a dream. I don't know what I'm prophesying to. It will do you like a dream. The way God will turn your life around. After this meeting, it will be like a dream. The way you will get the job, it will be like a dream. The way you will get the contract, it will be like a dream. 
the way your visa will come it will be like a dream the way the door will open it will be like a dream somebody say my father my father set turn it around for me set turn it hallelujah sit down I told you all of that to tell you one thing. I began to ask question, how did my name get there? So it was when I came back from the US, I was giving report. One man was looking at me from Plateau State. And the man greeted me, I greeted him, I said, sir. He said, sir, it's amazing how God works. I say, sir, I don't understand. He says, sir, they have finished nomination. They came together for final selection. He says, so I was serving them tea. And I heard them talking about what they, who they were looking for. He said, that was when I just said to them, I said, there is a man I know. He said, I told them, I said, there's a man I know, sir. And his name is so-so-so. -so. They said, really? They said, you know him very well on your honor? He said, yes. He said, he said I think you people can check him up. He said, sir, I will not take glory for what God did. He said, the only thing I did was to mention your name. Sir, I was not sure they would take you. Because they didn't like pastors. He said, but I was there when 10 of them unanimously shut down others. And when it got to your name, in one minute, all of them said, that your man. It says that they followed you for nine months. That they profiled you for nine months. They attended your meetings. Nine months. It says that when they called you, they have finished all that they needed to do about you. It says that I can tell you that God is with you. He said, I did not tell them to choose you. I only mentioned you. But if he didn't mention me, God will not make them choose me. I don't know who you are here. May your introducer show up. I'm not getting your amen in this house. May your introducer show up this moment. Somebody will mention your name where your life will change. Somebody will mention your name where your life will change. Number two, the kind of men, men's help. Number two, you need people we call interpreters. Interpreters. The Bible says Joseph had a dream, mommy. And the Bible said Joseph was in the wilderness and he was lost. And a man found him. How can you be carrying dreams and you are lost? Is it possible to have visions and you are still lost? Yes. Because vision in itself does not produce result. It is the interpretation of vision that leads to action. And he met a man. And the man said, young man, who are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for my brothers. And the man provided him with guidance that began his journey to greatness. The king of Egypt had a dream but lacked the interpretation thereof. And Joseph brought the interpretation of the dream. Have you noticed this, sir? All through scriptures, Daniel became relevant by interpretation of dreams. Am I talking here? Have you noticed that kings always have dreams, but they don't have interpreters? There are people here who know have a dream of becoming a very rich person. But how? How has been your frustration till today? The job of interpreters is to take your vision and break it down. Show you the how to the what. And God sent me to announce to you here. I don't know. Who, is there any dreamer in this house? Anyone with visions in this house? Anyone say, Pastor, I have vision, but I don't know how. 
wave your hands if you are the one I'm talking to. Well, can I pray for you without wasting too much time? That from today, the God of heaven who sent Joseph to the king and sent Daniel to the king, that same God is sending your interpreters. I said that same God is sending your interpreters. Pastor, churches, churches don't make significant progress without interpreters. Redeem Christian Church of God. The success of Redeem is not on the strength of the visioneer. The strength of Redeem is in the strength, is in the hand of the interpreter. So Pastor Iadeboe, all he just did was to carry the vision of the father. Interpret it. I said, this is what the vision said. This is what parking that your me saw. This is how we're going to get it done. That Redeem will be a church that will be across the nations of the earth. How do we get it done? It is in the era of the interpreter that the vision found expression. It was the coming in of an interpreter that took the ministry to the next level. Pastor, it was the coming in of interpreters into our church that began to move us to another level. What I, Reverend Sam, what are you trying to do? I say, eh, God has shown me we're going to say, okay, Pastor, look, this is the way. So on the strength of private interpreters, God is causing dreams of years to find expression now. Pastor, how much I want to pray for men of God like us, that God will bless us with interpreters. That what we carry in our minds, that God will bring sons and daughters who will say, Daddy, what is your vision for the women ministry, for the men's ministry, Mama? And then you begin to tell them, they say, Mommy, we know how to make it happen. That is when you will see the church moving to levels you have never thought of. Your business can begin to go to another level when interpreters enter your business. Interpreters multiply results. So God needs to send you introducers. Those are the things God will be sending to most of you here. Watch and see what is going to start happening. Because of my time, number three. God is going to be sending you what I call encouragers. What do I call them? Now, now listen, encouragers don't interpret anything. The job of encouragers, man, is just to sit around you. Whenever you feel like your hands are going down, what will they do? They don't fight for you. They don't fight for you. But that hand, your hand must never... They will keep telling you, keep moving. Keep mo you are receiving bullet. Their job is so you will keep moving. The job of interpreters is to make sure you never quit on your assignment. Their job is to stand by you. They are not many, sir. They are not many, sir. So if we find them, let's value them. And don't try to make your, in, your, your encourager to be your interpreter. He is not anointed to interpret. You will frustrate your encourager when you are trying to make your encourager to be your interpreter. And that's how many of us frustrate people out of our lives because we don't know the assignment. Lastly, because of my time. Lastly. And you'll be, listen, I'm telling you what God is going to start bringing into this house. So I have seen pastors destroy their encouragers. You don't be telling me where God is with us. God, you never give anything. You don't give. You don't give. You never give anything. And, and, and shocking part, the person has money. But rather than the person to give money, the person will be, mommy, don't worry. We are with you. you mommy, no, you must go on. So, so a pastor is like, ah, with all I know you have. That is not what is called to offer you. Placing a demand on him to offer what is not anointed to do will frustrate him. And the sad part is that he will leave. Then the one that has money will come and give you the money. 
that you meet with pressure, nobody to encourage you. That's why you will know that money can't do the job of an encourager. There's a fourth kind of people God is sending into your life in this season. I call them providers. I see everybody saying yes now. Do you know who providers are? Providers are people who enter into your life. But God doesn't send them until your dream has been properly interpreted. In fact, what attracts them is your dream. They may not like you. They may not like you. You may not be their kind of speck. But when they heard your dream, it resonated with them. Am I talking to somebody here? Pastor, that's what you're going to be saying. They will just tell you, sorry, I, I love what people are trying to do here. That's how to know interpreters. That's how they talk. I love what people are trying to I, I, I love what, I can see where people are trying to go to. So, Pastor, tell me more. So, what does he, what are you people trying to do? May your, inter, may your providers not arrive only to find out that your dream has not been interpreted and budgeted. I am opening your eyes to the mystery of life today. Before your Cyrus comes, know how much your temple will cost. Before your Cyrus comes, make sure you know what your temple will need. Gold, silver. When Cyrus comes, he is not come to help you design the building. Cyrus wants to come and say, sorry, what is the design like? Where do you need gold? How much? That's their language. What is the cost? Last year, because of the growth in our church, we have, broke, we have taken up four churches out of our church. So we're spreading to five centers in Abuja. Now, the more we do it, the more the church keep growing. Okay? Now, the children's church is always a challenge. Because we keep attracting a lot of couples with children. So last year, my wife said, look, I need to do a project. She's in charge of the children's church. Say she wants to do a project. She wants to build. I said, yeah, baby, you want to build? This is around March. She said she wants to build. I said, hey. I said, do you know how much it's going to cost? She said, don't worry. God, my God will do it. I said, okay. And then she said, sorry, I need you two to support us. I, I said, I thought your God is going to do it now. She said, yes, he's going to use people like you. She said, just help me announce it in church that we want to build. And I came. My protocol is here. So I stood. I said, well, our church wants to do something for your children and all of that. And it's going to cost us this amount. I said, my wife and I are dropping 10 million. That's our only two contribution to start. After service, I gave the check to the administrator. Only for the administrator to call me a day after. He said, Papa. I said, yes. He said, there's a problem. I said, what's it? He said, a woman came to him and said, tell pastor that I said you should give him back his check. I said, ah. I said, what happened? He said, the woman said, the Lord said, it is only her husband and herself that will handle that project. That any other person that wants to give in our church, they should look for something else to give. They should look for another project. Sir, they deploy. We were watching the building go. Everything's been finished. We were watching the building rise to taste. And as they did it, God began to open doors for them. So that's how they returned our own 10 million. So I look at the pastor. I said, Pastor, where is the check? He said, Papa, no. He said, we've already cashed the money. He said, sir, we'll be easy to do an expansion project in the church. I said, look at you. <laughs> what am I saying? When somebody announced a vision, somebody responded. Can I say this? Your providers have not heard your dream. The reason your providers have not showed up is because they've not had a well-articulated dream. Somebody carries the money to fund your dream. The person has not heard from you. Our assignment as pastors 
is to announce the dream. Keep announcing it. Someday, somebody will walk into the church and say, I heard your dream. I, I'm sure Dr. Tonya has been to our church in Abuja. The land we are, where our church is located, 2010, a woman followed her friend into our church. She just followed him. And then I was teaching on business issues and all of that. And the woman said, ah, in a church, your pastor is teaching this kind of thing. She said, maybe it's just for this Sunday. So she came the next Sunday. Because she's met a lot of charlatans who are pastors. And she's a big businesswoman. And didn't have a church. Three Sundays, four Sundays. Then she said she wants to meet me. She said, pastor, she, said she told God that I'm going to ask this pastor a question. In the area of ethical dilemma in business. The way he answers me will show me whether it's a pastor that can pastor me intellectually. That I don't want a pastor that can only pastor my spirit. I'm a businesswoman. I need a pastor who when he's teaching, I can be making business decisions. So she brought her question on a Saturday. And I was attending to the question. As I attended to the question, she said, who are you? Said, are, are you a pastor? What kind of person are you? That's how she said, hey, I hear that this church is looking for a land. I said, man, we've been on it for almost 10 years. So. She said, eh. Hey. She said, Pastor, will you mind this particular area of town? I said, ma, which area? I said, ma, you don't know how far we have gone. So this one is in town. And you are telling me I don't mind? I said, ma, I mind, I mind, my mind. <laughs> she said, follow me. That's how I followed her with my wife. I called my wife to join me. We joined her. She said, the land is, she didn't even know where the land was. She said, the land is somewhere here. I've already put it out for sale. Somebody's asking for 60 million then. 60 million. And she said, I told them I'm not taking, I mean, somebody was asking for 50. She said, I'm not taking it. less than 60. She said, Pastor, do you like it? I said, I don't know where it is here, but anywhere here. <laughs> Pastor, I was watching this woman. Guess what she did? She brought out a phone and said, suspend the sale. Then she put her hand into a bag, brought out document. She said, Father, today I am fulfilling my vow. That I, I was just looking at her. What's going on here? And then she carried document and gave us. So me, I was thinking she was going to tell us the price. She said, sir, years ago when I came into Abuja, I came in with 20 naira. She said, I didn't have money to take care of my child. My husband drove me out of the house. She said, I entered Abuja only by pure water to bath my son. And I knelt down in this Abuja and I said, God, if you bless me in this city, I will build you a church. She said, Pastor, let us start somewhere. Here is the land. I'm giving it to my God. She said, we'll talk about building later. I said, Ma, are you joking? That's how I started crying. We paid nothing. Listen, one day I was coming to that same church. We are on plot four. One day I was coming and the Lord said to me, buy plot, plot three. So I asked them, I said, who owns plot three? They look for the guy. They call the guy. He said, 150 million. I said, you should tell him 60. If he had told us to bring 6 million, we didn't have it. I said, but you should tell him 60 million. The moment we mentioned 60 million, he got angry. He said, you people should never call me again. Did I tell you I'm hungry? I told my pastor, I said, calm down. Call him again. Tell him 80 million. You know, it's always easy to send others. So I said, call him. He called him. He said, don't call me again. 80 million. He said, did I tell you I'm looking for food? We left him. After my pastor called him, I went to announce to the church. I said, praise the Lord, God, church. I said, that church next to our land is our own by the grace of God. My pastor was looking at me. He said, ah, pastor. A year after, I traveled out. I came back and they said, the man wants to see me. He came into my office. Sat down with two of my members. He said, hey, I hear you want my land. What do you want it for? I said, me, what do I want it for? Vision has been prepared long ago. I said, we have a vision to set up community center. I have gone to the U.S. in Atlanta. Matt Shear is willing to give me equipment worth $120,000 if I have a place that is called a clinic. I said, we want to build a community center. He broke down. And he said, can you excuse me? 
I left my own office with him and two of my members. One of them came and called me, said, sir, this man has been broken beyond measure. I said, what is the problem? They said, the man said, you reminded him of what vow he made to God when he came to Abuja. I said, so what is the issue now? They said, the man said that he doesn't want the 120 million, 50 million anymore. That can I give him 15 million so that I can give a friend who is part of this business that wants to just give it to the friend. But for him, the remaining 135 million, we should forget about it. That's how the land entered our hands. Because he heard my dreams. Somebody has the power to fund your vision, but you are not talking about it. My time is up, and I must respect my time. <laughs> Amen. There will be all that. Eh? No, I have to stop, madam. I have to stop. <laughs> I have to stop <laughs> so that I can come back again. Um, because if you say I should continue, that's the person that will decide whether I will come back again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So can I pray for this house? Our God is a marvelous helper. Satan's help is what we call vapor kind of help. It's a help that dazzles but does not last. It gives you what we call momentous pleasure but it costs you your treasure. What you lose for what you get is usually going to be several times what you get. What shall it profit a man if he gains the world and loses soul? Satan's help will steal your soul. But the best of hell, the best of hell, I will look up to the hills. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody in the house of God? I will look up to the hills. Is there anybody going through trouble here? Is there anybody going through some challenges here? Is there anybody going through some tough moments here? The Lord said I should tell you, look up to the hills. He said I will look up to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the hell and the earth. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That you may be bold enough to say the Lord is my helper. He is your present help in times of need. He is your present help in times of trouble. God is your helper. The one who helps you in the nick of time. He never comes too late. He may not come too early. But he will never come too late. Somebody shout God is my help. Say like a minute. Say God is my help. Come on say like a minute. Say God is my help. I came to let you know that the God of Uzziah is your God. The Bible made us to know that Uzziah was 16 years old. No father to help him. No uncle to help him. But the Bible says Uzziah did two things. The Bible says he sought the Lord and he did what was right in the heart, in the sight of God. What that simply meant was that Uzziah was a man who always wanted to do what was right in the sight of God. What does that mean? When nobody is looking, I am aware God is looking. When nobody is in the room, I am aware God is in the room. So Uzziah always does things to please one person and that is the Lord his God. Number two, Uzziah will spend time seeking the help of God, crying to God and say, Lord, my father cannot help me. My mother cannot help me. Friends are unwilling to help me but lord i come to you the stronghold of israel the god of jabez i come to you for help and as he turned to the lord the bible says as he sought the lord the lord made him to prosper god helped him god helped him what is the difference between a man that god helped and a man that helped himself sir the Bible says they started building engines that never existed. Somebody's about to come up with a solution that will shake the world here. That is the work of God's help. 
strange ideas when God begins to help you he begins to give you strange ideas ideas that people will be asking where did you get it from number two when God begins to help you he begins to give you strange products you begin to come up with products that will shake the market when God begins to help you you begin to notice you attract favor strange favor people are willing to help you helpers are willing to come your way somebody say father help me Like I said, I want to honor your time. Is there anyone who need the help of God here? Raise your hands. Can I pray? I wish I could spend time to prophesy over your lives individually, but my time will not allow me. All I just need now is your faith and your amen. Can I pray that the four individuals I mentioned, the four kind of people, can I pray that they will come into your life? Amen. Are you ready for that? Be sensitive when they come. Remember, when they come, they may not look like the people you like. <laughs> Can I even shock you? They may not be Christians. Cyrus was not a Christian. Many of you read the book of Isaiah. Cyrus, my anointed, whose right hand I have held. My anointed doesn't mean he's my child. It just means it's somebody that I assign to carry out a special assignment. It was available. It was usable. And I use a person who is not a Christian, a Babylonian, to carry out my assignment. God is about to send such help. Let's pray together. My heart is out to this house. I'm telling you. You will see strange helps. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. I'm seeing you in my spirit. There is something you've been trying to carry. There's something you've been trying to get done and you've not been able to get it done for a while. Wave your hand if you're the one I'm talking to. God bless you. Number two, there's someone watching me right here. There's a project you have started. All of a sudden, you just got stalled and you're not able to continue again because there's no presence of resource. Who am I talking to? Fantastic. That's very good. There's someone watching me right now. It's almost like an embarrassment in the area of finances. And you have deadlines. You have to pay this money, but you can't find where. Where are you? Where are you? Fantastic. Glory be to God Almighty. There's someone watching me right here and the Lord is saying to me, it has to do with your children and you are secretly crying and you are saying, God, my children need to go further but there is no resource to send them to the kind of school that you want to send them to. And you are saying, God, is this how my children will not go to the school of their dream? Who is the person I'm talking to in this house? God bless you. I can see that. We need to pray quickly. Let's pray. Number one, with your faith and amen in this house, I decree that from today, introduce us who will mention your name where you will be invited to and your life will take a new turn such introducers enter your life i said such introducers enter your life such introducers enter your life miraculously your name will be mentioned where you will be invited all of a sudden you will be told to bring your cv and as you show up, you will be given the job. If you receive that, let your amen be strong in the house of In this church, the Lord bring introduce us into this house. The Lord bring introduce us into this house. Those who will take the fragrance of this house beyond the walls of this church. Those who will introduce this church to the world of media. Those who will introduce this church to the world of governance. Those who will take this church to the heart of governance. To the nations of the earth. We call such introducers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Everyone here who is in confusion, I want to pray for you. Everyone who is in confusion, I say, God, I need direction. I have vision, but I don't have direction. Lord, I need an interpreter to come into my life so that I can have clear direction. Raise your right hand as I pray for you. Father, I thank you for all this one. Sue hands are lifted right now. And I decree and declare with your amen in the house that from today, your interpreters begin to show up. Your interpreters begin to show up. 
and I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, the men and the women who will stand by you so that you are encouraged throughout the journey of life. I pray your encouragers will show up. Your encouragers will not be discouraged. Your encouragers will not quit on you. And lastly, I pray for everyone who needs a provider, someone that will sponsor you, someone that will provide money, someone that God is sending to sponsor your dream. If you are the one, raise your hands. I decree and declare that your sponsors, your providers, let them begin to show up. Let them begin to show up. Men and women that God will use to empower you financially, that will give you jobs, that will empower you financially, let them begin to come into your life. If you receive it, let your amen be strong in the house of God.